Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 3 talking about machine learning and uh, we'll be getting ahead with the next segment here which is 3.2 the ML workflow and trying to understand what exactly it takes to build a ML model and what exactly is the right workflow associated with that. To kick off, of course, we have a pictorial representation for you with the entire workflow which a model development put together takes in order to build a ML model. Now, the journey, of course, is broken into two different parts. Of course, the development of the model, which is the very first partition here uh, put together. And then, of course, you go ahead and uh, deploy them, use the model and monitor it from the real time usage. So when it talks about the model development, of course, this is further being uh, broken down into the overall part of the model development. And then you have model generation and put together, you do have model generation and testing of it. So right from the beginning, or if you see from the top, Basically, we all get started with the objective that why do you need a model? What exactly is the expectation of it? And what is exactly the system is supposed to do? Because models need to be trained uh, according to the required objective and the expected goals. So number one and most important thing is to make sure that you understand the objective that why are we looking forward to create a model for any AI based system? On the left hand side, we continue further with selecting a framework where we have a lot of framework available for us to build and start with the ML models. And then we have to select and build the algorithms to it. Of course, there are some standard algorithms available. If you would like to deep dive, you may find more information about it. But here we are just taking it to a high level that you select and build the uh, algorithms for the ML model. Parallelly on the right hand side you can see which is a parallel activity that you can prepare and test the required data to train the ML model which is also a preparatory work which happens along with the framework and the algorithm preparation. Then the model gets into the model generation layer where the model generation consists of consistent activities of cyclic tight loop on training the model, evaluating the model, and tuning the model according to the deviations. So model generation is more about consistently training the model. And as per the training, we try to rev review it, evaluate it. And if the things are not exactly appearing, uh, as per the expectation, we look forward to tune the model later. That is about retraining the model. And that certainly continues in a very tight cyclic loop until unless we have the you know accurate outputs given by the model and once that is all good then it enters into the generation and test part where you basically have the generation done now the last part is will be of course to test so of course the testing team will get involved here to test the ml model according to the defined objectives once that's all done, so this would be uh, our part of model development. And once the model is completely developed and meeting the desired expectation, we push it into the deploying of the model to the AI based system, use the model. And from the realistic data and real time behavior, we consistently keep monitoring it and fine tune the model as and when required. So let's deep dive into each one of these stages with more some more detail. Of course, I gave you an outline, but there is some more information to add value to when you talk about each of these stages. So deep diving into the ML workflow, of course, the activities in the ML workflow are number one, understanding the objective. So we just discussed that the purpose of ML model to be deployed needs to be understood and agreed with the stakeholder to ensure alignment with business priorities. The acceptance criteria, including ML functional performance matrices, which we'll be targeting in chapter five to talk about, should be defined for the development model. That means, again, just like any other project, as you do have your requirements, along with that, you have some set of acceptance criteria, which should be met at any point of time to say that your work is done. As something similar, you do have for the ML models when you define the objective for them as the first and foremost thing that given that you have the objective set of expectations defined along with that we also look forward to have the desired acceptance criteria which should be met 
On the other hand, select a framework is basically, a, you know, a suitable AI development framework, which should be selected based on the objective, acceptance criteria and business priorities. So we have discussed about some of the frameworks in the chapter one, and uh, we can look forward to use any of them to build our ML frameworks. But again, just for your kind of information in the chapter one, also, we briefly outlined that what are our ML frameworks but uh, we have not detailed it, like uh, how to exactly apply them, what exactly these frameworks are in details. The third one, of course, select and build the algorithm. So you have choice to choose uh, predefined algorithms or build something of your own. So an ML, ML algorithm is selected based on various factors, including the objective, acceptance criteria, and the available data, what do you have? right so we'll be talking about that in the 3.4 the algorithm may be manually coded but it is often retrieved from a library of predetermined codes the algorithm is then compiled to prepare the training uh, to prepare for training the model if required so again you have two provisions you can make use of uh, something predefined to you know redefine it or enhance it according to your expectations by using the base libraries or if you want you can even build a model right from scratch that means you can write your own algorithms the way you want to drive it the way you want to uh, the ml model to perform but of course you do understand side by side that creating everything from scratch would be very tedious and could be time consuming for sure and uh, having it pulled from the uh, base libraries could save some of your time because you just have to groom it on top of it which you already have on the other hand, talking about the preparing and uh, prepare and test the data now, which is the most important part of an ML model, which is like what data will be used to train the model. So if the data is inappropriate, it is certainly going to make no sense at the end of the day. And uh, most importantly, you need to review and test the data that the, you're using the right set of information to train your ML model. Now, data preparation comprises data acquisition, data pre-processing, and feature engineering. Exploratory data analysis may be performed alongside these activities. The data used by algorithm and models will be based on the objective, and it is used by all activities in the model uh, generation and test. For example, if the system is a real-time trading system, the data will come from the trading market itself. That means a real-time data would be preferred in order to be used to train the model. But of course, at the same time, if you uh, just saw the line number one, here we do have data pre-processing. That means kind of like removing the sensitive information or uh, kind of like, you know, preparing the data in a way that it can be used to uh, train the model to suggest the right output, not the hard-coded responses. So you may have to you know, fine tune the system, prepare the data, which you can actually use to train the models. The data used to train, tune, and test the model must be representative of operational data that will be used by the model. In some cases, it is possible to use pre-gathered data sets for the initial training of the model as well. Otherwise, the raw data typically needs some pre-processing and feature engineering. So absolutely the same thing, what I was just trying to say, that our data must be uh, as realistic as possible so that the ML model behaves very, very appropriately. But sometime when you gather data from the real instance, it, it might be possible that uh, you are looking forward to do some kind of preparatory work to remove unwanted information from that data or keep only the data which is generic for the ML model to decide or make decisions, but not hard coded that in this case, I should always show you this. Testing of the data and any automated data preparation steps need to be performed. And that will be getting into 7.2.1 for more details on how exactly we input the data testing. Adding furthermore, of course, uh, train the model is another aspect, which is basically the code uh, ML model generation part. Here, the selected ML algorithm uses training data to train the model. Some algorithms, such as those generating a neural network, read the training data set several times. Now, each iteration of training on the training data set is referred to as an epoch, right? Now, epoch is a very uh, kind of like a generic term used in the iterations 
of uh, training an ML model. So there will be several rounds of you know training the ML model and each iteration, which is for example in sprint uh, in, in Scrum, you call that as a sprint. Here you call it as an epoch, right? So parameters defining the model structure, uh, which is the number of layers. Uh, of neural network or the depth of the decision tree which does matter in terms of how exactly your model has been structured are passed to the algorithm these parameters are known as model hyperparameters now parameters that control the training which is how many epochs to use when training a neural network are also passed to the algorithm now these parameters are called as algorithm hyperparameters so two type of parameters what we make use of the one which talks about uh, defining the model structure this is called as model hyperparameters and the parameters that control the training which is number of iterations required for ml model to recognize the inputs and to give the desired output is algorithm hyperparameters of course after the training what we need to do is evaluate the model so the model is evaluated against the agreed ML function performance matrices using the validation data set and the results then used to improve the model. Now model evaluation and tuning should resemble a scientific experiment that needs to be carefully conducted under, under controlled conditions with clear documentation. And that means point is we must not be looking forward to train a model blindly or without any kind of expectations or controlled environment because uh, ML model, if wrongly trained, could be sometimes disastrous or could be misguiding people or misaddressing the queries what we may have. So point here is that we, we just look forward to make sure that we are training the model in a way that it only learns what we want the system to do under our conditions now in practice the several models are typically created and trained using different algorithms and the best best one is chosen based on the results of the evaluation and tuning so of course uh, several models are also being trained at the same time because there could be possible ways of using different algorithms to do the same job so different algorithm based models will be trained and we would see uh, evaluate that which one is the best doing the right performance or optimum level of desired output and we'll just go and shortlist the same. On the part which is in the same code uh, ML model generation layer, you do have tune the model which certainly talks about the results from the evaluation of the model against the agreed ML functional performance matrices are used to adjust the model settings to fit the data and thereby improve its performance. So consistently based on the output, what you gain from evaluation, you will keep fine tuning the ML model and retrain the model to meet the expectations. So the model may be tuned by hyperparameters tuning where the training activity is modified, which means by changing the number of training steps or by changing the amount of data used for training. Or attributes of the models are also updated, which means the number of neurons in a neural network or the depth of a decision tree. Decision tree is more of like if within another if and then another if and so on. So if you may have multiple conditions, if this is true, do this. Then if it is true, do this. If this is true, do that. So there might be a number of levels on the condition check. And that's what we refer to as decision tree. The three activities of training, evaluation, and tuning can be considered as comprising of model generation, as per the picture. Now, once that is all good, and if you find this to be a little satisfactory, we push it for testing, and the testing team gets involved here to test the ML model. So test the ML model. Once a model has been generated, which is it has been trained, evaluated, and tuned, it should be tested against an independent test data set to ensure that the agreed ML function functional performance criteria are met. That means the data what you use for training the ML model will not be used for testing the ML model. You will have a new set of information or data set available for you to test the system so that we only get the desired outputs to check the performance matrices. The functional performance measures from testing are also compared with those from evaluation and if the performance of the model with independent data is significantly lower than the than during evaluation, it may be necessary to select a different model. 
So I think this is where we make the decision that how exactly we push an ML model for an AI-based system. So right from your testing, you will come to know that what exactly is the uh, quality and the performance of the model is. If in case the performance of the model is lower than during the previous evaluation phase, then you would look forward to choose some other models to see the output. In addition to functional performance matrices, non-functional tests such as for the time to train the model and the time to resource usage taken to provide a prediction also needs to be performed. That means even in ML model evaluations and testing, you do have functional and non-functional levels of executions. Typically, these tests are performed by the data engineers and data scientists, but testers with sufficient knowledge of the domain and access to relevant resources can also perform these tests. That means, generally, it is recommended that the uh, data scientists who have some good understanding of the resources and the algorithm being used are the common people who perform the executions of testing. But given that if a tester has the good understanding of similar domain and knowledge, then you can go ahead and perform the test too. Finally, once everything is all set, you go ahead and deploy the model, use the model, and monitor from the real time. So when we talk about deploying the model, once the model development is complete, the tuned model typically needs to be re-engineered for de deployment along with its related resources, including the relevant data pipeline. This is normally achieved through the framework. Targets might include embedded systems and the cloud where the model can be accessed via a web API. So point is, we just go ahead and fit this model into the required interface and the system where it is supposed to act as a component to make the system work. So you will embed it, you will fit it, and deploy it in the required infrastructure or the environment or the target environment. But of course, use the model is where you will go and real use the model. Let us once deploy, the model is typically part of a larger AI-based system and can be used operationally. Models may perform scheduled batch predictions at set time intervals or may run on request in real time. So depending on your criteria, depending on your conditions, you will trigger the use of the ML models. And uh, as a part of the AI-based systems, it's required, as and when it is required, the ML model should perform that required activity and give the desired outputs. Finally, from the real-time data, you will monitor and fine-tune the model. So while the model is being used, its situation may evolve and the model may drift away from its intended performance. To ensure that any drift is identified and managed, the operational model should be regularly evaluated against its acceptance criteria. Because over a period of time, you pretty much understand that your data can be revised or the realistic information, those scenarios can be drastically changing. And it's not something which is going to remain as it is when you train the model. So consistently collecting information from the real use will help you understand how exactly your ML model is behaving still and if there are deviations. If there are deviations, you will do the necessary fine tuning. So it may be deemed necessary to update the model settings to address the problem of drift, or it may be decided that a retraining with new data is needed to create a more accurate and more robust model. In this case, a new model may be created and trained with updated training data. The new model may then be compared against the existing model using a form of A or B testing. We'll talk about what is A or B testing. It's not alpha and beta, but something like that. So uh, I think that's what we were supposed to talk about, the ML workflow. Slightly lengthier topic and uh, lengthier discussion, but I must say that we have got a good understanding of uh, all what we wanted to have from an ML workflow. So I hope you had all the clarities of different activities and what does an ML workflow contents, and we'll look forward to add more value from the remaining topics of this chapter. So that's all from this particular topic team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.